Q&A at the end, but if anyone has a question, maybe in the middle, just please put it in the chat and Shahab and I will go through and uh, read out your guys' question as well. So, and feel free to interrupt me with for those questions. I'm not going to see the chat as easily uh, where I have it set up now. So, yeah. Cool. So uh, my name is Lacey Cerrone. I'm uh, happy to be with you guys today and super excited that I was asked to speak um, on, on the first ever digital luncheon for AMA Las Vegas. Pretty exciting. Uh, I've been looking for uh, networking groups to be a part of for about a year now, kind of dabbling, popping in and out of meetings. And this was actually next up on my list. So interesting how that worked out. Uh, looking forward to maybe getting more involved in what you guys are doing as we go forward. Um, so today, basically, I'm just going to run through some of the things um, that we, oh, why isn't it working here? All right. Some of the things that, you know, we're all kind of wondering, we're all kind of curious about, and that's like, who, what the heck's going to, what are we going to do with our marketing? What can we do now? What can we do later? How is this going to affect us overall? So I took kind of a now and later approach to the discussion today. First of all, I'm going to introduce myself, who the heck's this blonde even talking to you. Um, but then we're going to talk about square one kind of what most of us probably went through when the city was shut down recently and just everything kind of changed. Um, we'll revisit any and all of that because you know some of you may still be stuck in limbo in that area. So I wanna make sure to give you some action items and some ideas on how you can get out of square one and move on to clarifying your brand and maybe expanding your brand um, in this weird time that we're in. And then I've got some pro tips for you. Um, typically I teach free classes to small business owners and real estate professionals, pretty much anybody who needs my help. This is my, one of my biggest passions in life. So um, if you're a small business owner, this will probably appeal to you. If you're more of a larger corporation kind of marketer, I'm hoping some of this helps you, but I cannot guarantee because I have a tendency to gear most of my content towards individual business owners and things like that. So hopefully I'm still going to be worth your time today. All righty. Let's figure out who the heck is blonde chatting with you. Give you a quick rundown of me. Uh, so I moved to Vegas in 1989 from Kansas City, Missouri. I was raised in a very showbiz style family. My mom and my dad were performers. They performed on the strip and all over the country. Um, but we lived in Kansas City. So we moved here in 89 because uh, it made it easier for them to get work. Uh, after I, you know, was raised, we did a lot of theater, a lot of dance, music. That was basically, I basically lived in a green room and backstage and hung out with cocktail servers at the lounges in Las Vegas. That was, that was my life. I had a disco ball hanging in my living room, if that tells you anything about the kind of uh, upbringing I had. So very unique. Um, spent the first 15 years of my career in executive marketing roles for companies like Station Casinos, IGT, Cirque du Soleil. Jabberwockies, uh, very grateful for my time in the corporate world. I learned a ton and I'm so excited because I really feel like what I learned and took from as far as structure and marketing goes from that world, um, that I took it offline and took it into my, um, into my private ownership of my own business now. Uh, my husband and I founded a podcast uh, and video production company in 2014. Oh. Um, we start, we actually reached 2 million downloads with our podcast and this was before podcasting was really popular or very well known. So within about a, nine months, we hit a million. And then a few months later, we hit 2 million downloads. And, um, you know, again, there wasn't a serial podcast. Gimlet media wasn't out there. Like kind of was mind boggling to me as a marketer from the corporate world. Why wouldn't people be utilizing podcasts? Um, to get the word out about their brand, you know, and bring value to their clientele. So we created, after getting, after having success with our podcast, we created a podcast and video production company to try to kind of evangelize podcasting a little bit to some of the um, larger corporations. And we were successful in doing so. We, we have in the past and still continue to produce shows for um, companies like Tony Hawk Foundation, Misha Tate, who's a UFC fighter. We did uh, one season of a podcast for UNLV during the election couple years ago, um, produced it on their behalf and, and collaborated with the teams there, had a really great time. So have a little bit of podcasting background along with just regular marketing and digital marketing. marketing. And then I moved out of the corporate world and out of all of that. Um, still, We still own our podcast production company and video production company, but it's more of a creative outlet for my husband and I. We really kind of focus on taking on clients. We're very much white label. We don't market ourselves. It's very much a referral business. I shifted all of my focus over to the real estate world because I wanted to do that for 15 or 20 years and was able to expand from being a single agent in 2017 to now I have 10 people on my team who are selling um, real estate here in Las Vegas. And we're really aiming to evolve this world that we're in and kind of move on and make it better, make it less antiquated because unfortunately the real estate world is a little bit antiquated. Um, so enough about me, last final slide on me. Here's the things that matter the most to me, my family, Las Vegas, especially vintage Vegas, because I'm a, I'm a huge freak about that. My team, uh, my business essentially, 
helping people fall in love with living in Las Vegas. And I freaking love small businesses. It is my jam all day, every day. If you're a small business owner, I'm here and I always want to be able to share what's in my head to get you going and get you moving. So I feel, feel it's, it's pretty important to kind of talk about who the heck I am because, you know, anybody can get up here and watch a YouTube video five minutes ago that tells me what I'm going to teach you and then turn around and try to teach it to you. I'm just teaching you from what I know and what I've practiced recently with my team as we have experienced everything that you guys are going through as well. Any questions before I move on? I think we're good. Okay. So let's start at square one. Oh, okay. First things first, don't panic. I'm sure a lot of us experienced a moment of OMG, what are we going to do? My life, my, my business, my, my income, you know, everything kind of hit us like a, like a tsunami. So, you know, most of us have already gotten past the panic stage, I'm hoping, but I thought I'd throw it in there anyway. Um, don't pull the plug. That's, these are kind of square one fundamentals I want you to keep in mind when it comes to your marketing for your business, because you know, just because we're in a pandemic or whatever situation might come in the future does not mean that you need to pull the plug on everything and kind of be quiet and wait. You have to remember that your marketing now is not only feeding your present, but it's also feeding and building for the future. So it's super important to don't freak out, don't panic, don't make, you know, crazy moves and start unplugging our, our marketing and stop, you know, all your budgets and put them on pause. This is the time to kind of stop, pause and reassess everything, but don't pull the plug. Also keep in mind, ad inventory for especially digital ads for Facebook and things like that actually are becoming cheaper right now because other advertisers are canceling. So you can stretch your budget a little bit further if you just pause and wait a minute and try to reassess and kind of um, you really reconfigure and dig into what your analytics look like. You can really go and stretch that budget really far, especially right now. So that's something to keep in mind. This is a thing that I believe in, in life in general. I never let fear decide how I move. I don't let fear make any decisions for me. doesn't mean I don't feel fear. doesn't mean that I'm not um, fearful. doesn't mean that I don't you know, have that as a component of, in the process of decision making, but that's never the thing that makes decisions for me. So I always try to encourage people, especially in this moment, you know, yes, I know you're scared, but, but don't forget that you've got a lot of really good work and marketing and, and substance to kind of go back to and dig in and really re refine what the heck was working so that you can make small tweaks and keep it working as you move forward. So let those past advertising performance metrics, you know, speak to you and tell you your story and, and turn off the news and don't pay attention to what everybody else is saying. Try to really pay attention to what you know and that heartbeat of what your business has been running with. Small thoughtful moves during this initial kind of phase that we're all in right now is super important. Making major shifts like, oh, I, I'm, now I'm gonna start a brand new YouTube channel. I'm gonna grow to a million followers overnight. Like it's just not realistic. Not saying you shouldn't have a YouTube channel because I think every business should, but you wanna make sure that you're being very thoughtful about what you do so that you don't have a bunch of half thought projects open but not finished. And then beyond that, your clients aren't ping ponging, following you all over the, the digital internet, trying to figure out you know, where the heck you're going next. So keeping small moves in mind is a really, really important process. Something that I did immediately when all of this kicked off a few weeks back or months back now, I don't even know what date is, is I, I kind of in my mind set some immediate goals and like assess the situation from, from an immediate perspective. And then I put in some short term and long term goals um, in place so that I could really keep my head straight as much as possible while the world was kind of crumbling all around me. So, um, and again, remember it's okay to market yourself during uncertain times. And I think that's a really important moment to just pause on for, for a second here. Um, I personally even was hesitant about continuing my marketing campaigns, pushing myself out there, selling in any way, shape or form, because I was being um, very identifying, I was, I, let me back up, I was very much identifying with the empathy that was needed in the, in the community and with a lot of my followers and a lot of people who were you know, on my page. So I, I, I had to pause, definitely didn't do it right away, but then I realized that people were looking for joy and hope and we wanted to be the ones who brought that forth. So um, less was it about selling and more was it about letting people know what I did, what kind of a subject matter expert I am and how I could help them by sharing value right away. Um, beyond that, it really just let people know I'm showing up and I'm not selling you. I don't care if you buy a house right now. I don't care whatever, blah, blah, blah. What I care is that you know everything's gonna be okay. So I kind of converted my sales message and my marketing message to everything's gonna be okay. Let me keep you abreast of the information and the situation at hand as it relates to what I'm an expert on. But beyond that, I think what it did was it let people know I'm still willing to show up even though I don't have all the answers. So that authenticity I think rings true with people in all aspects of life, but especially in a time like this. I'm seeing a few messages, alerts. Are there any questions that I need to pause for? I think we're okay. 
We are good to go. So okay, far. thank you so much. Good Appreciate job, it. By the way, thank you. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Um, so here's kind of an example of some of those immediate, short-term and long-term goals. Again, this, this is going to have to fit to your business needs. If you're a largely digital business, things are going to shift a little bit. If you are brick and mortar and you've never been online, it's going to be a much bigger uh, conversation. But if you are already kind of balancing between both worlds, you're serving clients in person, but you're also meeting them online or marketing online, then you're in a pretty good, you're in good shape to kind of pick up and start moving. So from an immediate standpoint, what I did and what I'd recommend you do, and if you haven't done this, it's not too late. P.S. None of what I'm saying today is going to be a, oops, well, you should have done that a few weeks ago. You could start any and all of this right now, and I hope you do. So um, what I would recommend you do is take a digital inventory of your channels. So do you have a website? Do you have a Facebook page? Do you have landing pages that are kind of trickling out there for, for sales funnels and things like that? Do you have a database? Do you have an email mar marketing campaign that's running that should probably be paused or maybe reassessed? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you, you name it. You want to look and, and really just make a list of everywhere that your business shows up. Keep in mind that also would include Google, Google My Business ads or even just, even just the, the listing online, things like that. I actually helped my mom. She owns a Sin City Knit Shop. It's a local yarn company here in Las Vegas, little yarn shop. And she recently moved, actually in the middle of this crisis, she moved to a new location. And we had to get in there and update all of her business listing stuff on Yelp. I mean, you name it. We had to basically do a complete inventory checklist. And thank goodness we did because we found stuff that we didn't even realize was still out there with like two addresses ago. So it really helped us kind of clean up the mess and make sure that we were okay. Uh, you want to identify how you're going to immediately respond to the situation. And, I, and what, I, what I mean by that is, I know you all experienced it like I did. It was like day one, two, and three, maybe all the way up through day seven of, the, of this crisis that we're all dealing with. The city's being shut down. The, the country's kind of hearing the president speak on a daily basis. I probably got 700, and I, I don't think I'm exaggerating. I probably got about 700 emails with the exact same verbiage, exact same message. Our client safety is the most important thing to us. Ooh, is someone kind of pop in? I'm hearing somebody talking. I'm sorry. Yeah, Marissa, maybe. Sorry. Are we good? I'm going to keep going. You're good. And now I'm not muted. Okay, we're good. So um, yeah, so just really do an inventory and identify what that message is. I was getting increasingly annoyed and almost turned off by every new email that came into my inbox or every new post that I saw that said the same damn thing that everybody else was saying. Our clients' health and safety is the number one of the most important to us and we're doing everything we can. If you don't have anything to say, don't say it, right? And that's, I think, the biggest message that I can take from all of this. I also saw a lot of companies going online it's one thing to have nothing to say, but still be able to provide value. It's another thing to just go online and be online and be present and wait for someone to tell you what to do or fill a void that's really not even there to begin with. So just want to be very cognizant about that immediate response to whatever's going on. So, um, you know, and this isn't just for a pandemic situation. Look at October 1 when that happened or even 9-11, right? If we, if we had the digital internet that we have now, it would have been a different story. But, you know, with all anything that's happened in the past or anything that may happen in the future, you got to be really cognizant and stay, figure out how you can stand out and also stand out authentically. I can tell you right now, some PR firm probably wrote the same same, you know, email for all those companies on their behalf. The president probably took one look at it and signed off and it felt that way when it came through. So I'm just here to encourage you guys to make sure no matter what you do from an immediate or an ongoing messaging standpoint, you need to make sure that that's an authentic coming from the heart feels like a human wrote it message. Cause I think a lot of us failed, um, from that perspective as, a, as, a, as in the situation that we're in right now. And then you want to clarify that immediate message that's going to be used. So is that message, we are pausing on selling anything right now while we figure out what's the next best steps. Is that message, we may be a brick and mortar store, but guess what, we're taking our business online, please help support us. Whatever that messaging might be, figure it out right away or figure out your interim message and then get, get over the hump and start communicating what you really need people to know. So that's just like day one, day two, right? That's like, oh God, what are we gonna do? Then after we get past that and we can start to breathe a little bit and still trying to assess, trying to assess everything as it's coming our way, you wanna move into a short-term planning um, experience. And I don't like to call these marketing plans, especially in this type of uh, an environment that we're talking about, because we're not really marketing, we're communicating. Frankly, we're always communicating. And I always think of them as communications plans, but most of us being marketers and being here at the AMA, American Marketing Association's meetup, marketing turn gets thrown out quite a bit. I want you to change your mindset when it comes to a pandemic or any of these crazy uncertain times that may happen in the future. And always think of it as I need to figure out what my communication plan is gonna be for my clients, current, 
public slash social media, as well as future clients. And the reason I break it down into segments is because what I have a hard time with is when I see a lot of companies and brands use like all for one blanket messaging. Uh, it doesn't feel like I'm special or important to them. It, and I don't care how big or small that company is. I still want to feel like I'm special and important to them. So I don't care if it's Victoria's Secret or my plumber that lives down the street. I want to feel like they care about me and care about my business. So each level of that brand or, or size of organization has to figure out how to, fig how to do that on their level. But it is super important. And since I do gear this mostly to small businesses and small brands or medium-sized companies, even just personal brands, it, it, it's even more so important. And you have the luxury of being a human that can communicate through human conversation. If you have a business that's your brand, Sarone Group, that's my company's name, Sarone Group. You know, when we speak, we speak as if we're a human. And if need be, we can say, this is such and such from Sarone Group, here to tell you X, Y, Z. So you don't always have to speak as if you're a company talking to someone. You can bring it down to a personalized level. And that's super important right now, especially with people who are just looking for answers and looking for comfort and hope. Um, once you have fig figured out, you know, what your seven day communications plan is, what your messaging might be for each of those segments, then you're going to set an advertising budget for testing and messaging on platforms. If you don't currently spend money on running ads on social media, totally cool. I do not encourage you to learn how to do ads right now. Right now you got to figure out how to keep your business afloat. I do encourage you though, if you have tested or trialed any of that to try, um, tinker around with Facebook ads and Instagram ads and, and even YouTube pre-roll, mid-roll. Um, ads for your business. You know, if you have a little bit of your foot in the water, it's going to be much easier to kind of get in and test and, and track. But what's awesome is your budget's going to go a little bit further if you do it the right way. So definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, so many people want to pull the plug and pull back and stop spending. I'm just here to tell you, like, you have to spend money to make money most times. And especially in this moment where news and the politics and everything is taking over the, the airwaves, you've got to figure out how to shine. Sometimes that requires you being delivered directly to the people who need to hear from you. Um, and then, of course, as you should be doing as good marketers, you should always be evaluating your marketing ad messaging and spend each week, each month, whatever your metrics timelines are. After we come up with that short term plan, you know, that plan can reinvigorate and re get re triggered every week, week after week. You can just do a new seven day communications plan until you don't until you know what's going to happen next. Like, so I would assume like if you had done this from the beginning, you would be on your fifth or sixth iteration of the seven day plan. And you're just waiting for the governor to open up, waiting for us to get some instruction, waiting for whatever's next. Um, if you're past the short term and you're ready to start looking on long term, some of us just need to live right in the middle here. And that's OK. You don't have to move on. You don't have to grow. You don't have to create some course while we're off, while we're off work. And I'm using that air quotes very heavily. If you can't see me, you, you know, this isn't a time for better get your hustle on. If you're going to do anything with your life, this is a perfect opportunity. Now, this is a perfect opportunity to go through the seven stages of grief that we're all going through because our normalcy was ripped away from us without any anybody warning us. And um, to really let your body, your mind, and your soul kind of align and make sure you just stay focused on what's important, which is the current business you have. Uh, if it's been decimated because you can't open your doors and you can't create an online version, then okay, use this time to create something new and start a new path. But if you aren't in that position, please don't lose focus and don't think that you need to be doing all things all the time to everyone for everyone. This is the time for you and your business to get super close, get super clarified, and really stay focused on what the, the business at hand is, which is to make money and to pay your bills. If you're in a position to where you got that seven day things working, that business is still humming, you're feeling good about that, and you want to expand or figure out how you can utilize this downtime, that's when we move over to the long-term plan. Um, and I had no idea I was going to spend this much time on this slide, but I'm so glad I am. So um, I'll speed through any others if I'm running over time. Just let me know. Um, from a long-term plan perspective, it's really important to create and execute a brand collaboration plan with like-minded complementary business. And what I mean by that is, you know, I do this every day anyway. I collaborate with every kind of business you can imagine in town because that's my jam, right? I love small businesses. I love sharing their message. I love ex helping people explore Vegas and fall in love with Vegas. I can't do that with just me creating the content. I have to rely on my community to help serve that message out there to let people know what's, what's actually available in this amazing city. So I find that to be an extremely important component and pillar in my brand and my brand marketing strategy. If you don't have that as part of your brand marketing strategy, now is the time to do it. And I'm just telling you, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of little brands, small, medium, and even larger sized businesses in our city and outside of our city that would be more than happy 
to collaborate with you, do a package bundle deal and sell your products together for Mother's Day or whatever, what have you. So start thinking that way. From a long-term perspective, long-term growth comes when you can collaborate and get utilize other businesses' audiences for your audience's behalf, right? You not only have your audience you've built, but you can then tap into all these other people. And if I can be honest with you, that's how we got to a million downloads on our, on our podcast in nine months when nobody freaking knew what a podcast was, right? We did that because we were handpicking other podcasters, hand choosing, hand selecting people that we were interested in, that we respected, that we felt that our branding aligned with. And we said, hey, can we buy on your show? We'll have you on our show too. It was a mutually beneficial thing. They got to take advantage and grow from my audience and vice versa. And that, my friends, is the number one key amongst other things. But really, that was the number one you know, silver bullet that really helped us turn, turn that and unlock that process. So I believe in that so wholeheartedly. I've carried it with me through every other business that I've operated and, and started. And it's every time proven to be a success. So um, collaboration over competition all day, every day. That's my, that's my jam. Um, now's a good time to maybe also identify some new business offerings and products that might be needed. So I'm seeing a lot of companies who, um, small businesses, Etsy style companies, things like that, that are now making masks. Cause that was something that came out of the situation that, oh gosh, I better start making masks. I have fabric. I can make a little money on the side. I can help people get what they need to stay safe. Never a bad idea. Right. Or maybe you're a brand or you're a, a coach, uh, some sort of a personalized mentee or, co or mentor or coach, and you want to start finally spend this time to maybe come up with that finally that course you're going to sell online or maybe that mastermind group or whatever it is you might be working on. So if you're going to identify new business lines and offerings, you know, first I always say figure out how to collaborate with others first because that still links back to that hum and business that you have in the background. But then if you want to start to stretch your legs, reach out into other areas, definitely this is the time to do it. Um, explore and expand into new platforms and mediums, as I mentioned before, if you don't have a YouTube, if you have already got your business humming and you want to try to some new things, YouTube would be a great platform to look at. LinkedIn is like super underpriced right now. I'm actually interested to see what happens with LinkedIn after all is said and done because it's such a B2B platform and a lot of people might be looking for jobs. So that could be an interesting platform to take advantage of. And then I'm a big fan of creating an ongoing giving plan that basically incorporates into your all day, every day, long-term business practice. I'm not asking you to turn in Tom's or Warby Parker, where you're providing free things to the homeless or to, you know, third world countries it for one for one kind of thing. But I am very encouraged by seeing so much giving going on right now in our, in our community. And I really feel like if my, my entire business has been founded and the foundational backbone of my business is based off of giving, giving free guidance, free value, free information, free classes, whatever. And I believe that that's what's helped me be successful. So I've always had a giving plan incorporated into my plan and I'm just here to encourage you to do the same. Don't just make it happen when it's needed right now. Maybe make it a bigger part of your vision and see how it can help you grow. Cool. What I'm seeing from a current trend perspective is um, it's been very interesting actually. I've been very closely watching kind of how people market themselves, how companies are adjusting and, and evolving. And what I've seen largely, this isn't everyone, but largely across the, uh, across the board is most of us showed up loud and proud when we things started hitting the fan and everything was changing. We were here, we were sharing content, we were shouting people out, we were loving each other, we were being empathetic, we were focused on giving, it was beautiful. Then a couple weeks later, that started to like pare down. I didn't hear as much of the supporting each other and loving each other and empathetic stuff. Then it turned into, holy crap, I gotta stay afloat. How am I gonna run my business? Well, I can't be spending time on, on Facebook sharing other people's stuff. I've gotta focus on my business, which is no, nothing wrong with that, but you can do both. And then what I'm seeing more and more of, which is making me really sad, is I'm seeing a lot of people go from loud and proud to staying afloat to dimming their light very quickly and not even being anywhere present. Their website's not updated, their Facebook and Instagram, where I'm going to, to look for information, completely dormant for a couple of weeks now. I'm reaching out, sending messages. Are you guys okay? Are you still in business? How can I help? Not getting any replies. And that's happening not on one or two. That's happened to probably 20 or 30 people that I've connected with over the last few months. So just, I want to make sure that you guys are aware, like if you're feeling like you're dripping down this pyramid scheme here of, you know, towards the, the light being dimmed, you're just tired of social media. You don't want to be on your phone anymore. Who needs another zoom meeting, right? Hey, how you doing? Um, all those things, right? Those are real feelings and emotions. That's all part of this weird seven stages of grief that I know we're going through as a community, as a, as a world globally. Um, but I want to encourage you, if you can be aware of it, and now that I've made you aware of it, that you probably have gone into this little pyramid, upside down pyramid, 
see what you can do to reverse it, see what you can do to reactivate, uh, change it up, go outside, you know, figure it out, get out from behind this computer and, and try to go and share a little bit about what, what's going on in your world with your followers. I promise you they care. Okay. So let's talk about messaging. Um, I'm sure there's probably some marketing people on this call who offer these types of services. Let me help run your social media. Let me help do this, that, and the other. Those are all amazing services and I encourage you to take advantage of them if your budget allows. But now is not the time to hire somebody today to take over your social media. You have to be authentic. You have to personally show up. We need to see your face or your company's face or your employees' faces. We need to know that you're, there's human beings running this. It's not just some robot in the back you know, doing their thing. Doesn't mean you can't get help with content. Doesn't, need, doesn't mean you can't get help with posting physically or physically scheduling or creating or curating the content. But there needs to be a human being within your business, whether it's you or someone that you can appoint, that has the messaging down, that knows the back end conversation, that's not in some, you know, VA land, you know, in Bangladesh, or someone maybe even just down the street who's a local um, person who provides that service. It really needs to have your thumbprint and the heartbeat of your business behind it. That's really important. I want you to listen first before you before acting. Now, listening first sometimes for most people can turn into, um, for some people I should say, can turn into listening for way too long and never doing anything because they're waiting for the perfect moment. There is no perfect moment, but I think you can all probably appreciate the listening first uh, component really comes into play when it when it's really a moment of you going, okay, I'm not really sure what my immediate response to this is going to be, or I don't know how I'm going to handle this new messaging I have to deliver that we're now only offering this, or we're stripping back our services to that, or whatever that messaging might be. So start poking around on the internet, look at some of your competitors, look at what others are doing and start to take note so that you can figure out how to stand out, but also make sure that you're in alignment with what seems to feel like is acceptable um, when it comes to pulling back and, and all of that. So that people can support you also. So listen first. When you listen first, you can find out how people will want to support you as well. Make sure you clarify that message. Self-serving content will be remembered negatively. I'm just gonna say that twice. Self-serving content will absolutely be remembered negatively. And I'm not, I can't see most of your faces because I can only see my screen, but I'm gonna ask you all to nod if you personally have seen someone's ad that just seemed a little, not off color, but just ill-timed. Uh, if you've seen stuff getting served to you that just seems like they're trying to take advantage of what's happening, new products are being delivered that you're like, where did they come up with that? And how did that happen so fast? Just, I have genuinely seen so much of the buy from me. I don't care about the rest of you. Oh, I, I'm sorry for your loss, but Hey, don't forget I'm a this, um, that I have ever before. I've seen so, so much of it. It's, it's actually made me ill. So I'm just here to encourage you guys. If you've done any of that self-serving propaganda, of buy from me, buy, 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 buy. Um, and I'm going to throw my own industry under the bus. Real estate people are the absolute worst at it. We are the ones who are first to tell you, I've got a new listing. First to tell you to buy this. First to put everything in front of your face and let you know that you need to buy a house from them. And I've been preaching it for three years now and I'll keep till the day I die. I'll keep telling people nobody cares. Nobody's going to care if all you're doing is selling. They want to know that you're a human. People want to buy homes. People want to buy products. People want to work with and, you know, give their patronage to human beings who they think and believe care about them. If you're constantly pushing your message, how do we know? We don't. You could be the nicest person in the world, but we wouldn't know it because you're constantly focused on you. So I don't know if you're nodding, but I'm nodding. I've definitely seen a lot of it. And, um, you know, we need to be the people who don't do that. We need to be the ones who do, do it differently. General consensus is absolutely. They've all seen yep. that. Yeah. So we can't be that. Thank you for chiming in on that because I can't see anybody's faces. This is very strange. I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> um, give, give, give. All content must be helpful in the first stages. And even in your ongoing seven day communication plan, figure out a way to infuse giving. And I, I wanna say this too, cause a lot of people, including myself and my team, we've been a little hesitant about sharing our good deeds, right? Cause we, we're very big, we're very um, you know, philanthropic. We wanna give back to the community. You know, we're pooling our money, we're buying food for homeless people. We're doing lots of really, really beautiful things. And all of my team members were like, but if we share it, doesn't, isn't that kind of self-serving? Normally, sure, it can absolutely be uh, construed as that, or I don't even know if that's the right word. It can absolutely be seen as that. My, I'm tongue tied today. However, in a time of crisis, what I've noticed is it's almost needed, and it's, that, it's almost like that immediate, they're just saying they did that because they want our business. They're just telling us, oh, how dare they? All that immediate negative talk that we immediately go into, like, oh, how dare they? for some reason boils down and goes away in these moments it's almost more of an inspirational message it's almost more of 
you know, wow, look at what they're doing. We need to do something too. What can we do to help match that? It also creates a little bit of friendly rivalry or competition to help all, to help us all kind of step up our game. Oh, you gave that much. Well, we gave this much. What about you? You know, so it, it can be fun as long as your messaging is in alignment with the real, true, authentic reasoning behind what, behind why you're doing it it'll come through. If you're a butthead who says, well, if they're going to give, then I guess we have to give to give one more dollar than they do. Make sure our PR team knows about it so they can write a release. Then we not need to have a conversation. That's not the way to go. Continue to show up. So this kind of goes back to that upside down pyramid model that I talked about. Hey, everybody showed up on day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, maybe 12, maybe through 14, right? Day 15 and on, a little dicey, a little thinned out, a little quieter. Some evolution happens with the messaging. It's no longer, what are we going to do? It's here's what we're doing. Cool. But I'll tell you what, man, the amount of people that have ended up in that bottom barrel, not showing up, not it, it's heartbreaking. So don't be that. And even if you're just not showing up because you're busy or you're tired of it, figure out a way to cut through it. Challenge yourself, find an accountability partner, get another collaborative business who wants to do some collabs with you to hold you accountable to. And we can go back and forth and figure out the right methodology, the right timing, the right content pacing, but you got to have somebody look at you going, where you been? I haven't seen you on Facebook in a while. Why haven't you posted on Instagram? People need you and they need to hear from you, especially in this time. Show your face. Okay. This is my absolute favorite thing. I include this in every presentation I do, whether or not it has anything to do with marketing, because I firmly believe that people need to bite down on this, chew it up, swallow it, and never let it out of their body again. Do video, 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 video. If I could say video for the rest of this, I would, and just eliminate the rest of my slides. If you're not doing video for your, for your business, you are completely missing the boat and the mark, and I would encourage you to just hang up right now. <laughs> not really, but seriously, video is king. We all know it. But most of us don't want to admit it. And I know that's tough, right? I get it. We were raised in a society of judgmental people and sweep it under the carpet and don't tell anybody about your problems and make sure your face is perfect and make sure your makeup is good. Like, right? All makeup background. And again, my wonderful industry that is so antiquated, God love it. People have to have the perfect hair. If one hair is out of place, am I on a green screen? Do I look perfect? All of that is such bullshit. And I'm sorry if that offends you, but it is such bullshit. People don't want perfection. They want you to be real. Uh, and I get into that a little bit more later, but video, 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 that is your face. My friends fall in love with it, show it, own it. Cause even when they see you off of video, that's the same face they see. So fall in love with that beautiful face of yours, lean into it. We need to see it and make sure you're customizing your messages for each audience. This is not one size fits all messaging. It is like I said before, those broad stroke emails that say, we all feel that the safety and blah, blah, blah of our clients. I believe you. I'm sure the safety of your clientele is absolutely number one. I don't care. That doesn't help me. That doesn't serve me. All it's doing is a regurgitated message on repeat and it's a broken record. So make sure that you're, if you're sending email blasts, that you're customizing them with the person's first name. Make sure that it's written in a tone and a manner that actually has an empathetic vibe to it. Do not have PR people write it. Have someone who's close to the heart of the business help it be written. Have a PR team review it if you have a PR team on staff. But you got to clarify your messages. You have to make sure you're speaking Facebook on Facebook, Instagram on Instagram, YouTube on YouTube, and that you're talking um, specifically to the types of people that you know you have through those um, platforms. Show up in their inbox, not just email. So some interesting stats that I found online showed that um, in most of the countries that are hardest hit by the virus, total messaging has increased more than 50% over the last month. Similarly, in places hard hit by, hardest hit by the virus, voice and video calling have obviously doubled, especially WhatsApp and Messenger. Obviously, that makes sense. People are trying to check in on their family and they're checking in on their friends. This is not a bad idea, though, for you as a business owner. Why don't you do the same? Check in on your family, check in on your friends, and check in on your clientele in their inbox, in their DMs, wherever you can find them and reach them. And it can be a, a standardized message, but it can still have that empathetic vibe. Hey there, just wanted to check on, in on you and still feel like it's a one-to-one -one conversation, which is super important. Always wanna promote content that serves the community genuinely. Again, I'm just going back to the authenticity thing. Don't donate $100 because someone else did. Donate $100 because you really want to. And if you don't want to, then freaking don't. And maybe be, be okay and comfortable with saying, we're not, we're not donating money because that's not how I give back. Instead, what we're doing is this, right? Don't just feel like you have to do what everybody else is doing or even do anything at all. But if you're going to do something, make sure you tell people about it. It's inspirational and it can help the rest of the community out. 
an idea that um, if you do blog posts at all on your on your website, or this could also align with um, Facebook posts and any kind of social media posts, honestly, Twitter, anything like that, create a blog post that ties into trending keywords and um, that would provide help and guidance. So for instance, like, I don't know, a uh, stay at home order was one of the more recent number one um, terms off of SEO a couple weeks back. So you could write a blog post or a post titled something, something, how to handle the stay in five tips for handling the stay in order, stay, I don't even, can't even talk, stay home order in Las Vegas, right? And then just provide ideas, provide ideas for at home family time, virtual classes related to your business, you know, start giving some stuff away for free. It's okay to give away for free to then get possible clientele as well. So that's where those free eBooks come into play. That's where, um, just jumping online and being available for people for a free coffee hour each day, things like that. Those things go a long way and people will take advantage of it in the right way. And then you want to, again, cross share collaboration over competition. I live, eat and breathe that vibe. Uh, along with the small business vibe. Like those are two things that I just run through my head all day, collaboration over competition. It's not easy being a realtor and, and then teaching another realtor who sits across the table from you exactly how I grew my business. But I'm passionate enough and deeply in love with the idea of seeing my industry as a whole elevate and grow and become less antiquated. That I don't care if it, it's detrimental in the interim as long as I feel like I'm impacting my industry for the long run. I want you guys to take that same approach with your business. Yes, I realize cross-sharing and cross-collaborating with businesses muddies the water a little bit and sometimes the messaging and, you know, it gets a little crazy, but you got to be willing to try it and you should be willing and always open to collaborating with other businesses, even if they're not your direct competition, because again, you get to take advantage of their audience as well. And then make sure you share those outreach and give back efforts to inspire and encourage others like we talked about. We did determine uh, that being a message of hope was super important. We were doing um, live every other day, live uh, meetings, or pardon me, live YouTube streams, uh, live Facebook, live Instagram, just trying to be live and present. And when we weren't going live, we were cutting videos and putting them up to just really continuously create an opportunity for people to feel an ounce of hope. Whether I had the answers or not, do it. Do you think I honestly knew what was going to happen with the with the housing market when everything kind of came to a, a screeching halt? No, but I was refusing, and I still refuse to admit that it might be going downward. Do am I aware of stats? Absolutely. Am I aware of what's coming? Sure. Doesn't mean I have to be the one that regurgitates that information. Being the message of hope is going to go a long way, and is going to be more sustainable for your brand than always being the person that just jumps up and down with what every news outlet is telling us that is going to happen. So be really careful with what kind of messaging you're sharing but if you're going to go the hope route i promise you it'll benefit you in the long run and then again don't be don't be afraid to ask for help and this thing this is inclusive of behind the scenes help with how do i even do an seo blog post or um how do i do a facebook ad i've never done it or what do i do to start a channel or whatever right or it could be even front of house help with, with by asking your clients please help us please help support us you know what you could do to help us many of you've reached out you could buy a gift card during this time and that would really help us keep our doors open or we're doing curbside only like my mom's a yarn shop she's not an essential business she's not serving food but she has a large subset of clientele who are dying for new yarn because they're sitting at home knitting and they don't have anything else to do so she had to figure out a plan so she decided to do vip private sales so she's not outwardly telling the world hey come buy from me because that's obviously not what's supposed to be happening so she's speaking directly to her one-on-one -on -one clients and saying listen i can do curbside i'll send you emails of what i'm running from a special perspective we can process this over the phone make it super rudimentary super basic because she doesn't have an online business yet I'm working on her but she's a little slower to the punch there. But with all that being said, like it really afforded her to not only keep money coming in throughout these last few weeks, but continue that strong bond with her clientele. And she did, wasn't afraid to ask for help. They reached out and said, how can we help you? She said, you can buy yarn. And they said, how do we do that? And then we came up with a way to do it. So never be afraid to ask for help. Before I move on, are there any questions? We do not have any at this time. Cool. Thanks, Marissa. Again, please share them in the chat box if you guys have some. Yep. Cool. Did you want to pop in, Jeremy? Sorry, did I hear you? No, nope, she got it. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys. All right, so brand clarity. So when you're looking at your brand, I'm going to pull this whole thing up because I want to make sure we're all talking about the same thing here. It, We've, if you have a business, there's likely a moment in time that you went through a brand exercise or a branding exercise where you identified your why, you identified like what exactly am I selling, what's my business even going to be, who am I trying to go after, and how am I going to do it, right? This is the basics to starting any kind of a business, really anything, who, what, where, when, why, right? So 
why is, is more important now than ever. And your why needs to almost be your entire messaging boat, right? You can have a lot of stuff sitting on the boat, all your deals, all your, all your courses, all your this, all your that, all your programming, whatever services you provide can sit on the boat, but they better be floating on a big fat boat of your why. And that why needs to be so strong that you can immediately pick it up that when you look at your content and you can immediately, you know, digest it and know what this person or this business or this brand stands for within 2.3 seconds. Right? So you want to revisit that because anytime you're starting a business, you're looking at this, you're creating a brand from scratch, you're going to be in a position to where, you know, everything's floating, doing great. You've probably done the good work, but we're in a totally different landscape right now. So it's never, never a bad idea to go back to the beginning, go back to your roots, revisit all that information. Why did I do this? Why am I still doing this? What does success mean for me? Because success needs to, is probably going to need to look a little differently for you, different for you now as ver versus six months ago, right? Because six months ago, we didn't have, didn't have a pandemic. We weren't shut down. We had free flowing money coming in and out, business opportunities galore. So you're going to need to redefine what sex, what, what success looks like. I told you guys, I'm, I need to take a drink. I'm totally tongue tied. Sorry about that. So you need to define what does success look like? You need to make sure you are clear on how you're going to achieve it. And that might be seven days at a time. That might be baked into that communications plan seven days at a time. This is how I'm going to achieve it this week. This is how I'm going to be successful this week. And so you can tweak and, and tolerate and move it from week to week to week. Um, what aspect of your brand do you absolutely love? And here's something that I think a lot of us kind of forget. If you started a bakery because you absolutely love baking, but now you freaking hate it because it's your life and you didn't realize this was going to become like this in your life versus I love baking and I'm having a great time. Maybe revisiting what really got you into this in the first place is a good thing to do right now because when I say authentic sharing and authentic posts and authenticity in your content, those are the moments, those are the things that people want to hear from you. They want to know why, why are you doing what you do? Why do you still, why are you fighting so hard to stay alive? Why are you fighting to keep your business's doors open? Yeah, of course you need to pay your bills, but there's got to be more to it and people need to hear and know that. So for me and for my team, we went back to the basics of what got me into this business my genuine passion and obsession with our city of Las Vegas is the entire reason I do everything I do. It's the, it's the first thing I think about when I wake up, it's the last thing I think about when I go to bed. I love our city and I believe wholeheartedly that people can build an amazingly beautiful life here. They just need to know how to do it. They need to have the keys to unlock the city because it's not the easiest city to just break right into, right? So those are the things that we talked about, we revisited, we, we went back to the basics and said, how can we get people to realize this is all we care about? We don't care if you buy a house from us. We'd like you to, but we don't care. We care about you calling us for the advice before you buy a house from anybody else. We care about calling us for advice before you move to a city that you don't know and fall into a trap that maybe you could have avoided if you talked to somebody who was local, right? So once we went back to the why and the what, we really were able to identify all of that and clarify it. And then that changed how our messaging and reinvigorated our messaging as we went out to our clientele and reminded them, we're not here to sell you anything. If you wanna buy something, we'll happily do that. But that is not our goal or our mission today, our mission is to just bring value. And that helped us go back to the valuable roots that we know that we were able to share. So think about that, dig in with your business, the why, the what, the who, you wanna make sure you know those clients. You wanna know, you wanna make sure you know them individually. You wanna be able to, in a three seconds, in a three second meeting, tell me who your client is, what kind of demographics they have, and, and who and what they're doing, to, or how and what they're doing to support you in this time, right? If you don't know that, pause everything. Don't try to brand, grow, brand anything. Get back to knowing who the heck you're serving so that you can figure out how to evolve and, and really roll with the punches with that crew of people. Your hardcore fans, which some of mine apparently are on here today, which is awesome. I did not expect any of them to show up, but the hardcore people, they're hardcore fans, people who believe in you. I hate this term. It's so overused, but your tribe, for lack of a better term, for those of you who well, the online marketing world, they love using that word, your tribe. If that's the word you use, I'll go for it. All in, your tribe. Whoever it is, you got to know your people. And then you, after all that's figured out and clarified and, you know, maybe nothing's changed. Maybe you just need to kind of revisit it and like solidly know who you are and what you're about. Once that's done, you got to figure out how you're going to get that message out there. Are you going to run ads? Are you going to start a YouTube channel? Are you going to already be on YouTube and start changing the way you do your thumbnails or your titling or your this or your that? Start looking at how you're going to get in front of them and specifically talking about what audience you're reaching for in every platform and really adjusting your organic messaging and making it evergreen so that any and all audiences are going to feel the same kind of vibe from you, the same organic, authentic feel and vibe, and they're going to know who you are and what you're about.
a couple other little tidbits. I won't spend too much time on this one. Um, revisit your brand core values, core values before everything, right? Like I, I could recite my core values to you right now. There's a couple of cuss words in them, so I probably won't do too much of that. But, you know, we know our core values. We talk about them day in, day out, all day. All, you know, it, it is who we are. It's what we do. If you don't have solid core values for your business, now would be a good time to set that straight and, and lean hard into it. Make sure that those core values are what lead and define every single decision you make on a daily basis. If you don't, you're probably not going to last very long. So get back to the basics and make sure you understand those values and those offerings. Does your, does your product even still bring value? If not, maybe it's time to pivot. Your brand story is something that nobody really even talks about very much from a small business perspective or even a medium business. Your story is what people care about. People want to buy from a company that has an actual story behind it. They don't want to buy from somebody who goes, well, I don't know. I found a hundred dollars in my back pocket and I decided maybe I'm just going to start an arbit online arbitrage business and I'm just going to figure out how to utilize Amazon. Like nobody, that, that doesn't make me want to buy from you. Now, if your pricing is amazing and I don't have, uh, there's no brand alignment there. Cool. Your products might do the work for you, but a killer business that's never going to lose is a business that has a solid core brand solid core foundation and a story to tell and badass products for badass prices promoted on all the proper channels in the proper ways. I know you all can get there. It's just a matter of making sure you got that foundational core first before you start layering on top. Um, and then revisiting your messaging. And we've talked about that a hundred times, self-serving and things like that is not a good thing. Blanket message is not a good thing. The real question I want you to leave this with today is do I have a one-to-one -one conversation slash relationship with my audience and my clients in my marketing through my marketing. I'm not saying you need to call everybody one-on-one. -on -one. If you're in real estate, I am saying that. So scratch that if you're on the, in, in real estate, you need to be calling them one-on-one. -on -one. But if you're not in real estate and you're in some other industry, like whether it be medical or food service or um, you know school or coaching or online or digital only, whatever that looks like to you, a one-to-one -one relationship comes through how you, the vernacular that you use when you're doing your turn, um, when you're doing your videos and your messaging, how you, your voice, your messaging, how you write your posts, the captions that you use, the words that you choose to use. If you're saying, Hey guys, every time you go to go on video, that's not talking to any one person. That's talking to anybody who wants to listen and nobody wants to listen to that. Right. If you're saying, Hey, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me again. I am so excited about seeing you because I feel like I'm going to be able to bring you so much value with the content that I'm sharing little bit of a different experience, right? It feels like I'm talking directly to you, not to the group of you. So that's a major, major pro tip, big point that I'm going to revisit repeatedly. And if you ever talk to me offline, that's going to be the number one thing I tell you is video, video, video. And I'll say it for 12 hours. And then I'll say, and PS, don't do video like everyone else. Do it like you're actually creating and conversing with one human being. Everything changes. And then if you are at the place where you can look at expanding into other things with your brand, I'll, um, I'll bring this up again. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it is really good for you to consider and, and look at opportunities, right? So um, the brand collaboration plan comes up again here. This is part of that long-term plan that I mentioned earlier. So this is all of that basically reiterated here, creating package deals with cooperating businesses. Very important. Um, Maybe some new products are needed things like meal kits. A lot of the local restaurants are doing these really badass meal kits where you pick up the meal kit and then the chef goes live at a certain time that day and you can cook it live with them. I've done it twice now. It's been like the coolest thing I've done in a year. I can't, I'm like I'm doing it forever. I hope they never stop it. When they open up the doors, I hope they continue to do this. Um, virtual yoga classes. If you're a yoga studio, dance studio, anything like that, or even a physical therapy, anything like that. Utilize you know, the digital platforms that we have and create an online portal where people can still support you by paying to uh, view those online. I've had a few people say to me, but why would they pay me to do that online if they can just go to YouTube and do it for free? Why would they do that? It's because they're your fan and they want to support you and that's their job as part of your crew, your tribe, your whatever, that's their role. If they want to support you and they're asking how, give them the chance. If they choose not to, it's on them. Um, I have a client or not a client, a friend actually locally who is a business owner, been in business 22 years and, um, they are a stone restoration company. They do carpet deep cleaning and they do like biohazard cleanup basically for crime scenes and just for, for people who have had floods and things like that mold, just stuff that none of us should be dealing with. They do it. They shifted their business during this time frame, and they are now offering free disinfecting house or, or pardon me, car is free car disinfection for first responders, people who have been affected by COVID or have had it. And then also, um, uh, I think it's first responders, medical workers, and then people who have had COVID-19 They're in, they have the medical grade cleaning solutions, all this really rad stuff. And they thought, how can we give back 
How can we get our name out there, but let people know we want to give. And then also at the same time, that's the same stuff they use to clean houses. That's the same stuff they use to clean up after biohazards. So now not only are they going to get business from doing this, they're also getting this by putting their name out there, but it's, but it, it might be something they can charge for in the future. It's my point. So, you know, these are things that you guys should consider adding or expanding into and then seeing if they work well enough to keep them alive after the fact. Webinars, in-person, in-person versus in-person education, right? This is what we're doing today, right now. The AMA was like, we're not going to cancel our lunch and we're going to make it digital. So here we are and you get to listen to me drone on for 45 minutes. So never a bad thing, right? And then of course, again, I'm just going to reiterate it one more time. Video, video, video. Please do more video. I want to back up to that one. I did want to touch on TikTok for a minute. Um, LinkedIn's great. Instagram's great. YouTube's great. TikTok's awesome too. And I know Gary Vaynerchuk is out there talking about, yeah, you need to be on TikTok. It's the next hottest thing, just like Snapchat was, all that. I just want to point out and I just laugh briefly together because I have noticed so many adults getting onto TikTok just because they can and they feel like, well, whatever. And I'm literally, literally in person watching all the teenage friends that are my kids' friends cringe at the thought of like, now my parents are on TikTok. Next. They're trying to move on and find something better. So I'll be interested to see what happens with TikTok after this. I know they got a spike of downloads and a spike of users, but let's see what happens after everything goes back to normal. Just thought it was kind of funny because basically us parents are ruining TikTok now, just like we ruined Snapchat and just like we probably ruined Instagram. So sorry about that and Facebook, frankly. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's a couple of pro tips. A lot of this I've already reiterated, but I'm going to run through these really quickly. We talked about the fact that you need to know why. Consumers are more likely to purchase from a company that they can connect with on an emotional level. That's proven time and time again. Stats galore. You can look it up anywhere. This is a big deal for, for consumers. So you want to make sure you're the one that's there. Your why does matter to people. Some, some people would assume that it doesn't, but it really, really does. And again, without clarity, you're always going to be squirrel, distracted, or have tunnel vision and just do it the way you know how to do it and never other, any other way. So you asking yourself why, getting the clarity on your why should hopefully open up your mind to some new opportunities for your brand and your business. Um, you must know who. So creating a, a content strategy without an understanding of who your audience is is basically like being in the middle of the ocean with no navigational tools. We don't want to do that. We want to avoid using terms, broad terms when you're addressing the audience. Hey guys, should never come out of your mouth again, right? It's hi, welcome, thank you for coming back, welcome back, whatever. It's never hey guys. I do hey, hey, this is Lacey, your Las Vegas gal, and I'm sure that's even a little too broad, right? So work on that a little bit. Um, and always act as if you're speaking to one person. And something, you know, from a marketing perspective, to be able to connect with new people and grow your audience, search for your ideal clients and audience members through targeted hashtags that align with you and what you're interested in. People want to do business with people who are like them. It doesn't always happen. You can't always, beggars can't always be choosers because I may not think that there is a, I'm just going to make this a car salesman out there that aligns in this into dance and music and theater. There probably is, right? But I don't know that until you tell me that that's who you are, right? So it's your job to brand yourself and market yourself. It's my job as the audience to realize that we're kind of alike and to decide if I want to get on board with you, right? So but make sure you're still actively outwardly looking for new followers, new connections, things like that. Really, really important. Be the one who connects first comments, celebrates, and cares about the people that you're reaching out to. Do not be blanket, like, 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 comment, 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 comment. Do not be blank, follow, follow, follow. Individually hand select some of these people. Spend some time, get really granular with it because the more grand, uh, niche and more granular you get, the easier it's gonna be to really understand and identify if these are really people that fit in your, um, in your subset of clientele and your database. And again, you're gonna need to know how. So those with high volume of content right now will be the winners when all of this is said and done. So if you're not creating content every day, you need to be creating content every day. If you don't have enough hands and feet to create content daily because you're an octopus running a business trying to keep yourself afloat, find someone in your family or within you at, at the organization who can take on a little more and stay in tune with it, stay on top of it, but let them be the hands and the doer and you just dictate what needs to be done. Make sure it comes from you at the top. And then I am a Gary Vee fan. I love him. He's great. Um, I'm a big, big believer in his jab, 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 right hook methodology. The book he wrote for this, I think was written in like 2009 or 11 or something, maybe 12. It's way outdated from a social media perspective, but the fundamental message is not. And the jab, 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 right hook methodology is really talks about you have to earn the right to sell yourself or, or to promote your business. So with every jab, that's every post. Anytime you put a post up online, you're jabbing your audience, letting them know you're still alive. Boom, jab. Hey, just letting you know I'm still here. Boom, jab. Hey, just, just doing my thing. Boom, jab. Look, we're giving back to the community. Boom, boom, boom. The minute you throw a right hook, that's when it's 
hi, buy from me, here's a product ad, or look at me, I'm a this in this industry, look at my clients, anything that talks about you, what you do for a living, your industry, me, 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 bye, bye, bye right now, that's a right hook and you, and you have to be really careful with how often those are coming in your content mix. Um, and bottom line, get over your ego, get over your fears and your bullshit excuses to not do video anymore or one-on-one -on -one style marketing. I love you. I saw all your faces before we got online here. You're gorgeous. Trust me and fall in love with that face because we need to see it. And so do your clients. That's your face, baby. Fall in love with it. So here's an example of the jab, 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 right hook methodology, just to make it really clear. So you understand. And this is something that I practice. It doesn't have to be seven posts. It could be 10. In fact, when I first started my business, I was so hardcore against promoting the fact that I was a realtor that I would not let myself promote anything about me or my business for 10 posts. So I had to come up with and curate 10 different pieces of content about Vegas, about cool things to do in Vegas, about whatever value before I was allowing myself to promote myself as a business. Now, that's a different uh, content mix now. I'm probably, uh, out of every nine posts, I'm probably four or five are real estate related or maybe three to five are real estate related and then the rest is the other pillars of my brand. But this is really important. Um, you know, Again, like I said, really early in this conversation, unfortunately my industry is very uh, guilty of this. It's constantly me, me, buy, look, listing, sale, boom, boom, boom. You know, same thing for, you know, some of our local restaurants. Look at our fish sticks and sale, 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 sale. They're not ever talking about, you know, who they are, why they do what they do, the people behind the food that, people, that we're eating and, and just all of that. So again, if this is an example content mix and we're going to do the seven to one or six to one ratio, you're going to have maybe a relevant article about something going on. Maybe you'll do a video promoting an event, not yourself. Maybe you'll do a business network shout out or a collaborative cross collaborative cross post. Maybe an inspirational quote or a funny meme of some sort, maybe a video, another video, but this is now discussing the article you shared earlier. I don't know. Maybe it's a restaurant review because you're a foodie and you're also a realtor like myself and you want to do both, right? And then now, finally, after six posts, now you can promote yourself, your listings, your business, your products, your sales, your whatever. So your mix and your pacing is going to be completely up to you, but I highly recommend the six to one, five to one is no less than that. Don't go less than that ratio. You really want to make sure you've got, if you're looking at an Instagram grid, those top nine, those three top rows, you want to make sure that full nine posts, that grid that you're looking at showcases all of what you're about, not me, 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 buy from me. It's, I promise you it'll make a huge difference. The other thing I want to remind everybody of, and it's not on any, anything at all here as from a perspective of a slide, but I want to make sure you guys hear me when you say this. Social media and digital marketing is a long game. This is not post and get something tomorrow. It, when you run ads and you pay for ads, yes, you can have a little bit more of, a, of an immediate reaction to some of your sales and your goods and your offerings. But if you're going to do branding the right way and build an actual brand that has a backbone that people recognize, that people can see coming from a mile away, that has sustainability, that's going to take you through to whatever the next pandemic is or the next crappy thing we have to go through as a country is, you got to do it the right way and you have to think of it as a long game. So many people, again, my, my industry sucks at this. I'm sure there's many of industries, many industries that are on this um, call right now that are also guilty of this. You, you cannot rely on a immediate repeat. Oh, I posted. Now I got a lead. Cool. I'm good. And if you do, you're dead in the water and don't even bother going down this path. If you can just open your mind a little bit and realize Every, for every post you do, you're building something for the future. Every post, every organic post, every share, every collaboration, every connection, every DM, every like, every comment, all of that combines to create this solid backbone of your brand that's really going to be needed if we're going to survive something like this in the future. Any questions? I'm taking a drink. That was... That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Did so I go too fast? I do yeah. that sometimes. I, I mean, there's a few questions. Um, one question is, you know, and, and I was actually just going to answer because someone reached out. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe someone on here only uses LinkedIn and maybe, and I was in, just going to answer like, hey, maybe that's because whatever industry that person's in, like LinkedIn's gold, right? And mm -hmm. it doesn't have other media mixes and media or, and other platforms. Um, but, you know, maybe LinkedIn's the right one for him. Yep. Yeah, you do want to make sure. And I think something I should bring up as well if, before we answer any other questions is, you know, I, when I teach marketing classes or I teach branding classes, you know, my first thing that I say to people is you don't need to be everywhere. Now, if you're a business that's five, six, seven, ten 10 years in the, into things, 
I'm going to change that statement. But for you, if you're within the first three to five years of your business, I'm just here to tell you, you don't have to be everywhere. You don't have to be Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, da, 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 cause good Lord, who can keep up with all that, right? You're still figuring out your business. Once you get past that five year mark, three to five year mark, again, it depends on the business, depends on the industry. Then, then it's okay to start dabbling, doing some more things. But my main, my main advice for anybody who's pretty new to digital, pretty new to social is choose one platform. And I'm going to steal my adorable husband saying and get gangster good at it. Just be a gangster at Instagram, be a gangster at LinkedIn, whatever it is. Once you feel like that is like a habit, if you go to bed at night and then wake up at 3 a.m. and realize, oh my God, I forgot to post, then you know it's a habit, right? Because it's in your brain, it's waking you up in the middle of the night. Like this needs to be a thing that's becoming super important to your planning and your communications. But one platform at a time, my friends. Doesn't mean you can't post on Instagram and also feed it over to Facebook, that's cool. But when you're creating and curating content, I want you to make sure that you're curating it with one platform in mind so that the people who are on that main platform where most of your stuff goes, feel it. They don't feel like they're getting a share from another. They don't feel, you know what I mean? There's not like that weird gloss over effect. They feel like you're actually speaking to them. So choose one. And I even did that with my brand, even a, a marketer. I've been marketing for 20 something years. I started with Instagram and I would push it to Facebook. Didn't put, put much into Facebook. Instagram was my jam for a year. After a year, exactly one year, I was able to add YouTube and then, I, you know, and then adding on from there. So that's, that's my last thing and I'm sticking to it. Uh, we did have one question. Can you elaborate on LinkedIn? It seems like a great yellow pages slash resume ad platform, but yeah. I never had the idea that people really hang out there. That's very, very true. So, um, so LinkedIn has evolved in a big, big way over the last probably three years, I'd say two and a half, three years. They've really started to um, change the design the how you interact with the platform and also how they present themselves they are really trying to become like facebook 2.0 kind of or facebook 9.0 i don't even know what facebook's at right now but they're really trying to kind of be far they want to be where people do hang out and they're not quite there yet they're getting there though so what they did was they um collaborated with a lot of major influencers in the world you've got your richard branson's your gary v's you know all these major influencers to start realizing and cre or creating curating and realizing like and telling their audience oh this is a place that i'm hanging and so you might want to be here too. It's a great place to go if you're a subject matter expert about something. And if your audience or your, your products can be sold B2B as well as B2C, but it, don't let it stop you from being there if you're just a B2C because there's consumers on LinkedIn as well. Just make sure that your messaging um, comes into play and, and speaks more on your expertise and less salesy, I guess. They want it, that people go to LinkedIn for guidance, for information, for insight, and to be kind of inspired on what they should do next. And it is a great place to meet people if you're looking for a gig as well. I hope that helps. I, I use LinkedIn because I just post like, hey, are you looking for, you know, in, or billboards around the Raiders Stadium? Are you looking for yep. But I use it as more like throwing strategy against the wall, essentially. Yep. Um, I am a little too salesy. <laughs> so no, I need but, but that's the thing though, is like you, but you're a subject matter expert. You're, you're clearly coming at it from a, I'm thinking of your problems perspective. You're not just, I sell billboards, right? You're coming at it, hey, if you're looking for specific marketing in this area, I'm here for you. That's not, I wouldn't say that's too salesy. It's definitely salesy, but that's more of a strategic kind of, I'm talking to you, buddy, the one who just read this article. Um, I do, speaking of the Raiders, there's some breaking news I think everyone should hear. Uh-oh. The Raiders' first home game at Allegiant Stadium will be against the New Orleans Saints Monday night, September 21st, baby. Woo! I got season tickets. I'm stoked. <laughs> week two is, it's week two of the NFL, but it's the Monday night football game. That is going to be huge. Awesome. That'll be my first official ever football game. Oh, wow. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa Silverman said, but can we attend? I don't know, Lisa. You should have got I'll your put you in my backpack, Lisa. <laughs> Um, well, I, I have Garth Brooks in August. I'm hoping they let us sit in the stadium. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Oof. Um, I, do we have any other questions out there? I think we there can. was one from Sarah's iPhone. It says, I'm a real estate student in California. Would it be okay to network with you after I get my license? My online marketing ideas and my general values line up with what you're teaching. Love your Instagram. Looking for more realtors to network with. Thank you. That's awesome. Absolutely. Just send me a DM. Um, and then I can, I'll type my email address in here. Um, is this going to you privately? Let's see. How do I do this to everybody? Oh, here we go. I'll put my email address in the, um, 
chat box here. So if anybody wants to reach out to me for advice or just to say hi and be friends, I would absolutely love that. I love meeting new people, especially small business owners, medium business, just anybody in this world. That's like my jam. So thanks guys. And for anyone who did uh, jump in late, fear not, uh, Marissa is recording this. We will have this up on YouTube and we'll send it out to everybody. Great. What other questions can I answer? Anything else coming in? Mr. Peter Rad is harping on LinkedIn. Is it most important uh, there, there are like other sites to post frequently? Basically he's like, yep. you know, which sites uh, should you, I guess, provide more content or more uh, elbow grease, if you will? That's a, that's a great question, actually. Thank you. Um, so I, again, kind of go back to the choose your platform, the one that you're going to spend most of your energy and time on. If you're someone who's diversified a little bit and you're, you're in Instagram land and you're also on YouTube and you might also have a little bit of LinkedIn action, I would say, um, take whatever the messaging might be and try to customize it per, but try to push everything out on everything. Like, so if I'm putting some, something up on YouTube, that's going to work for Instagram. If I put it into my IGTV or if I give a swipe up to, to go look so I can share it there. And that's also going to work over on, um, on LinkedIn as well. So I think you need to assess it on a case by case basis with your messaging and what you're trying to get out there. If this is more of a, I love the world, I'm, I'm sharing my love. I want to make sure you see what I'm doing to support the community that should go everywhere. If it's more of a, Hey, check out my new sale. It's $9.99 now instead of $14.99. Might not be a LinkedIn, might be just meant for more of a targeted audience that's going to be more apt to click and buy. That's not really a click and buy kind of environment. That's more of a network and maybe buy later kind of environment. So, um, but yeah, from a, from a volume of content perspective, it's really just going to be based on messaging and what each individual piece of content serves as far as the audience goes. And then you can determine where it will belong. But I don't think you have to be anywhere more than the other. It's going to be what you choose. It's all very much what you choose. And where is your audience? You know, that's the real question is where do they live? Where does the majority of your audience live? All right. Any, any last questions out there? Also to your point, like your, your LinkedIn audience can be totally, like you just said, it can be totally different. Your face. I just remember when I worked at a hotel, our, Facebook audience was completely different than our Instagram audience. It wasn't even yeah. like, and that was just because of the demographics that are using, you know, each platform. So, and, and that's why it's also just super important to go back to some of the slides that I, that I created earlier. You know, you want to make sure that you know who your fans are, you know, where they are at. You want to know what makes them tick. You want to know where they live, where they spend their time. doesn't mean you can't find more fans somewhere else, but don't forget about those people and create stuff for the, don't forget to create stuff for those people directly. And then dabble with some other types of messaging in some of those other platforms. LinkedIn is a great place to be a subject matter expert and to write long form posts, blog style posts, articles, videos. They freaking love it. And they really love it when you share. And it's super underpriced right now, very cheap and uh, kind of fun to play with if you have a little bit of an ad budget. Again, want to make sure it's targeted and that you're doing the right thing. Gary V has a couple of really great, um, white pages and reports and posts off of his LinkedIn profile specifically that talk about if you're a this business, here's how I would use LinkedIn if you're a that business. So I'd highly recommend checking out his content. Cool. Um, awesome. Well, I, again, thank you so much, Lacey. I think we'll probably keep the chat up or the meeting going just for a little bit. So sure. if you have a moment to, for everyone to drop their um, LinkedIn URL, just so we can all connect uh, very quickly. Um, and yeah. I think that was it. Thank you so much. Seriously, Lacey. I mean, that was more, that was more content than I was prepared for myself. I'm like, Oh, I need to pay way more attention. Because oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, that's a compliment. I was like, this is amazing. You know, it's like, wow. Thanks. You know, I'll be I honest. When I teach classes, they're usually three hours long and I don't let anybody take a pee break. So I have a tendency to jam a little bit too much into my classes. All right, that's me. That's yeah, I had to take a pee break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't let, I typically am like, if you leave, you're going to miss out. I'm not repeating it. Just letting you know. <laughs> no, but seriously, that was, I mean, I wish we could have had you at Fleming's and we can all have a steak in our belly and, and yeah. blown, mind blown again. Um, but that Thank was, you. that was amazing. So I really appreciate it. Um, My and pleasure. It. And, uh, but yeah, I think, I guess we'll officially end our meeting, but if you want to keep up the, uh, the group chat so we can all connect, uh, that would be uh, more than appreciated to, to everyone. So Thank you all for, for joining us on our, hopefully our first and hopefully our last uh, virtual 
AMA, but I think we did pretty good putting this together. So, <laughs> um, but I really appreciate it, everyone. So I hope you guys and have hey, you, guys. You've got a lot of people from not Las Vegas who are asking for more of the digital. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, I am going to have to run to a call and I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> Totally fine. I'm here. I'm going to stay for, I have a Bye. call at two, so, but it's, I got to get off of here in 20 minutes. I got to prepare a little bit for it. <laughs> Some what kind of bit, can you tell me what kind of businesses are represented or does anybody want to drop it in the chat? I would just love to know, um, you know, kind of where everybody's coming from. Direct mail marketing. Awesome. Thanks, Sue. So you guys go ahead and unmute if you guys want to chit chat too. That's fine. Now that everything's kind of over. Susan. That means nice. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Sorry about that. Financial Thank services. You. Awesome. Uh, I saw somebody noticed uh, this awesome rad skateboard deck behind me here that was designed by a local artist who happens, I think his wife happens to be on this call right now. Uh, Juliet and Derek Douglas are actually the co-owners of a brand new coffee com uh, company coming downtown uh, in a couple of months, actually. We're really, really proud of them and excited. So stay tuned for that. Golden Fog Coffee, baby, coming soon. So we've got marquee exhibits. Hey guys. Oh my gosh. Lots of different. I love this. Lots of different, um, different industries. Oh, that's cool. Represented. This is cool. I know I got some realtors on here. I'm gonna call you out in a minute if you don't put it in the chat box. Jingles. Oh my God, Pete, my husband asked me, we just had a conversation two nights ago. We were talking about something over dinner and we said, um, I sang a jingle out loud or he had a jingle from like the fifties or something stuck in his head. And I said, how do you get these things stuck in your head? And he said, do you think that's still a job? Is writing jingles for commercials still a job? And I said, absolutely. And here you are. See, proven, amazing. Filmmaker. This is so cool. You guys, solopreneur. Hey, Megan, good to see you. Megan's an awesome yoga teacher and she's a whole 30 coach. If you guys are looking for somebody to do that um, or to help you with that, she's really awesome. Is Megan doing live yoga right now? If she is, can you put it in the chat box? Megan, Megan, hook it up. She does do some yoga for uh, Moto Yoga here in town. If you want to check them out on Instagram, they do a lot of that and she helps them with their social, I believe too. This is awesome. I love this. Hey, Sebastian. He got laid off and he founded masks in the USA. So he started a whole new company. Congratulations. Wow. Susan, I do just like a zoom workout every day with some friends. You can totally join that if you want. Send me your link. I will. I will. <laughs> and then, uh, Megan actually threw it over here as well. She's on uh, Instagram. You guys follow her. She's rad. Really, really cool. There we go. So so good to meet all of you. Thank you guys for joining and, um, you know, just for being here to hear the message. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying half the time, but I, if it helps you, then great. <laughs> Thank you. Birthday gift. Your passion really comes through, Lacey. Oh, thank you. Who's saying that? Who's saying that? Who am I, who am I missing? Susan. Hi, Hi Susan. Nice. There you are. Your passion really comes through. Thank you very much. I, I, you know, and I think the best thing that came from me leaving the corporate world, which I love the corporate world, I did very well. I had a great time, met lots of wonderful people, but I think the best thing that came from it was that um, I was able to finally really discover what that passion was or really just open my eyes to it and go all in, no red tape. It's been pretty awesome. Yay. Thanks. Masksintheusa.com, guys. Let's support Sebastian. He's putting his information over here in the um, chat box. This is rad. You guys are way too quiet. You know, we can, like, talk. It's okay. <laughs> um, Lacey, can you hear me? I can. Hi, this is Marla, Marla Garvin. Hi. Hi. Um, I do um, – I'm a professional poet who worked on Fremont Street for, cool. like, three years till they shut me down. I've got – fans from all over the world reaching out to me on Instagram, mm -hmm. just um, supporting me and telling me how, how much my poems mean to them. And um, what I'm wanting to do 
for Mother's Day, um, and I don't know how to even approach this, is do personalized poems for people's um, mothers where they give me three words, mm -hmm. and I take those three words and just empathically write a personalized um, poem for their mothers, but I don't know how to even start. That's a really approach this. Really sweet, very uh, thoughtful idea. I love that. And um, honestly, I mean, are you on social media? Is that how you promote your business I'm on currently? Instagram. Yeah, that's how I Perfect. got to know you. You follow me on oh. Instagram. Oh, okay. That's why. That's why your photo looked familiar. I was sitting here going yeah. like, okay, that's awesome. Okay, well, good, Marla. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm I Lady Brin. I'm the. I'm the. I have a pit yep. I have a brain injury, so I have a, a beautiful uh, seven-year-old pit bull, Lady Brin, that is constantly with me. Wow. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for following and also for tuning in today. And great oh, question. Absolutely. I would highly recommend um, going live on you on uh, Instagram and, and announcing what you're doing and having people because they can pay you through Venmo or whatever you're going to charge. If you're not charging for it, you're just doing it. Obviously put that out there, but recommend doing that. I would also recommend sending a direct message or doing a direct message campaign to a lot of your followers directly going into their inbox saying, hi, you know, I follow you, you follow me, whatever that messaging might be. Here's something I'd like to offer you for Mother's Day. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I've got to yeah. run, but this has been really great. Thank you guys. Thank you. Hey, Marla, share with me whatever you're doing and I'll make sure that I push it out to my audience. Okay. I will. Thank you, Lacey. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Marissa. You. Bye, bye now. Bye. Thank you. Claire's online still. Hey, Claire, good to see you. Red Rose Studio. She's also an artist, does beautiful work. She just moved out of Vegas. So I'm glad you joined us today, Claire. And she also works with a small business mentorship platform. That's rad. Very cool. Okay, guys, you got four more minutes. Whatever you want to address in the chat box, get it in there. Someone's asking, when's the next event? Do you guys know? Our next event? Um, we, so it really is kind of up in the air <laughs> with everything going on. We may or may not host our next luncheon in, um, what month is it? June? Jeez. <laughs> um, virtually, we may not. So we will keep you updated though. We will add all of you guys who registered for this to our database. That way you can start receiving AMA um, information. And if that's not what you want, go ahead and just um, unsubscribe at the bottom. Um, once you get that initial one, but we will add you guys that way you can kind of stay updated to see what we are doing here locally with our AMA, our American Marketing Association chapter. Cool. I think some people are saying, I think AMA should do more of these virtually, not just in person. So why not learn more on your plate starting in June? <laughs> yes. No, I agree. I actually think this is really cool. So I think we might incorporate it. Hey, Lisa, I know she was asking, is anybody having trouble with the AMA website? Yes, we were having some issues with it prior to start getting on board. I know they were looking into that. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm still getting an error. Yeah, the website's down right now. They, um, they actually jumped off to go try and get that all figured out. Should be up hopefully within the next 24 hours, um, but they are actually figuring that out right now. They're on a call with okay. them. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. It's nice I to know. meet everybody. I'm new to Vegas. Well, I'm not new to Vegas. I've been living here for five years. I've just been telecommuting back to my agency in Laguna Beach, California. And I'm looking to get involved locally now. So cool. yeah, we would here. love, love help. Definitely. We are a small but mighty board for sure. Um, <laughs> I used to be at the Ad Federation board in Orange County, formerly known as the Ad Club. You know. Oh, yes. I'm actually, I sit on that board here too, locally. Oh, do you? Okay, mm -hmm. I produced like tons of Addy Award shows and I was the treasurer and, and oh, I yeah, got to be so up here and it's like almost non-existent. I was really sad. But um, yeah, so it's, it, we, that ad or that um, ad club is, we are struggling. <laughs> so that one is, I don't know, we just don't have as good of volunteers as AMA does. <laughs> Well, if I land at a local agency, which I'm hoping to do so when everything opens up, we will talk and I will help you guys out again. Well, I do appreciate that. Um, I Did I connect with you on LinkedIn? I'm like, I just tried my best to get everyone in there. I think I did. So that's I will look. Lisa, I'm a, a membership chair for AMA, so feel free to reach out. I just put my email in the um, chat box. There you go. Okay, thank you. Then I'm just going to put my email on here. Let me make sure it's correct. Just in case you guys do have any other questions about AMA. Um, Jeremy is our current president. He jumped off. Um, but I am the incoming president. So anything that we can both 
help you guys with together, we are more than happy to. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Susan. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye, Susan. Bye, everyone. Good to see your faces. <laughs> hey, Natalie. I'm so glad you could be here. <laughs> hey. Hi, Natalie. All right, well, I think we'll end this. Um, I have, like I said, I have it recording, so this is great. Lacey, again, thank you so, 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 so much. You were awesome. And thank you. Yeah, we'll talk soon. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Bye.